Thanks, Jane Blaise Mitchell. Thanks, my girl. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. Uh, we got a great show today. Uh, a true crime exclusive. A woman who survived a horrific acid attack and gave her third degree burns. Uh, her boyfriend has been charged with a crime. She's speaking out for the first time. She fights for justice. And we've got a big surprise for her. Also, from the hit show Scandal, actor Tony Goldwyn is stopping by. <laughs> President, all those skinny love scenes that everyone is uh, talking about. Oh, a lot yeah. of stuff in the news to talk about. I don't know if you saw this amazing wave that there's a surfer named Garrett McNamara who's a big wave surfer, and I'm actually doing a story about him for 60 Minute Sports on Showtime uh, that's going to be on in about a month. But I've been working with him for about a month or two, following him around the world in Hawaii and also in Portugal. And he, that's Garrett there. He has been trying to find, he, he has the world record for surfing the world's biggest wave, 78 feet, which he set in, in, in 2011. This week, he may have broken his record. It takes a while to determine how big the wave is. But take a look at the picture of the wave that he oh surfed. Oh, my God. Just oh. this week. I mean, it's incredible. It's in this small fishing village called Nazaré off Portugal. Um, oh a lot God. of surfers didn't even know about this surfing spot, and he sort of discovered it. And, I mean, that wave is just... Enormous! It's incredible. Now, if you fall, you're dead. If you, yeah, in fact, if you fall there, you're dead because we're, he's actually. I interviewed him uh, last night. He's actually heading toward an area you can see on the bottom of the screen. All the surf there; those are actually rocks there. Oh my so God. he's actually heading right to the area where the rocks are. And if he had fallen, he would have been knocked into the rocks, and there's no doubt he would have been killed. He's got padding on his suits and like flotation devices. Um, and he practices, you know, holding his breath so he can stand yeah. underwater for long periods of time. Now, Anderson, I understand that he came out fine, but you ended up uh, this temporarily what, blinded this is, actually, by this doing is, the story? This is the exact spot where I got blinded because I was out on jet skis in this water with him for a couple of hours, and I burned my eyeballs. Aww. I'm such a wimp. Aww. The UV light bouncing off the water burned my eyeballs and uh, what yeah. was that like to be blind for what 24 hours or it so? wasn't fun I don't recommend it yeah I, I mean it, I didn't know you could <laughs> burn your eyeballs I'd never heard of that before and I'd gotten sunburn and but I and I woke up in the night and I could I was blind and couldn't see it was crazy but then everybody was absolutely there to help you and you knew how many people loved you because you were getting eyeglasses sent well, from all I, over yes, the I got world eyeglasses. my producer uh, from 60 minutes uh, Keith Sharman thankfully also had uh, some Valium which he gave That's me good. which uh, I had never <laughs> had before and I highly recommend. I, I got to say, I just became, don't go surfing on value. Yes, no, I, I didn't operate any heavy machinery or anything. But I was finally, I was it allowed me to sleep before I went to the hospital because it was in the middle of the night. Anyway, but uh, but I mean that wave is just incredible. So it'd be amazing if Garrett actually does break his record and um, and. He's trying to find a hundred foot wave, and that's what our story is all about. Wow. So and you get the happens. call like in the middle of the night, hey, there's a big wave. Come come well, across the world. He knew, you know, he actually tracks storm systems because hundred foot waves don't happen very often. There's only a few places in the world mm. where even physically they can happen. This is one of them. And you have there has to be like a perfect storm. So he's constantly checking satellite buoy information and satellite weather information. And uh, he knew there was a, a great a big storm coming, so he flew out there and um, we talked about whether or not to go out and meet him, but we were like, meh, no. And sure enough, he, he <laughs> cut. Yes. So are you saying that if you didn't go blind, you would be in this photo? No, 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 no. I, I, no. Because it I, sounds to me like you're getting out of having to be in this wave. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I would not have been in that wave anyway because that wave. Well, is you're a like, oh, wave. I went there to surf with him, and then I got blind, and no, I couldn't surf with him. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was there like two months ago with him surfing. Likely. Anyway, okay. I don't need. I don't need to talk to you. You're not the host. I'm not. I'm asking the questions. This is what people want to know. Oh. Oh. I got you back, Anderson. Oh I'm asking what America wants to know, and oh they my. want to know if you were surfing. Oh my God, this one. No. Are you gonna surf? Are you intrigued uh, by no. surfing? No. I, yeah, I would like to surf, um, but I, I mean, not. I wasn't about to. To, like learn how to surf in those waves because that seemed <laughs> incredibly crazy. So we went out on jet skis in those yeah. waves, and uh, I, I rode on the back because I didn't even feel comfortable on a jet ski well, in a huge wave. I took a surfing lesson once, and you can get a guy to hold your surfboard and you stand on it, and then when the wave comes, they push you. It's it's easy. That just that, that sounds. That, <laughs> it was that a lot of like fun. Cheating. That it doesn't sound Hawaii. like surfing. I had a great time. <laughs> yeah, so you have to. That sounds like very labor intensive. You have a whole team of people. It just, made me feel very royal and regal to have a man push, <laughs> push my you. surfboard. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the other story I love is, uh, you know, I love my IKEA monkey. You know. The Aww. Darwin the monkey who got loose in the Ikea in the cheerleading coat. All right, so 
The video went viral. He's been sent to a sanctuary. He was taken away. Anyway, I was obsessed with that picture for a while. There is now another monkey in the news. This monkey's name is Vanya. Apparently in Russia, this is a monkey wearing a parka in the snow. And I'm obsessed. Take a look. Uh, yeah. uh, proving. I can watch that all time. Listen, getting getting back to the IKEA monkey. Uh, I don't think the IKEA monkey got lost. I think that the IKEA monkey was on a bid for freedom. Well, yes. Not for affordable furniture, but to get out of wherever he was because they don't like it that no, way. Yes. They ended up in a sanctuary that IKEA monkey, and I say. Hats off to the IKEA monkey for getting out of that situation. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> I, yes. I, I, I'm not one for putting costumes on, on monkeys or even on dogs, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I. That looks okay. Nah, I don't know. I feel like creatures have lasted for thousands of years without costumes. Yes. Uh, you know? I say naked monkeys. That's what I'm all about. <laughs> You're all about naked monkeys. <laughs> there's also a funny picture. There's a cat that's become, uh, it's gone viral, I think, just yesterday on Instagram. There's a cat. Who people say has eyebrows. Uh, Aww. Yeah. Um, we thought it. it kind of, <laughs> I love that Aww. picture. Yeah. We thought it sort of looks a little bit like um, uh, Eugene Levy, the comedian. Yeah. I don't know. Um, which I think we have uh, sort of a side by side comparison. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's pretty good. The other story uh, is this uh, article in the New York Post, front page of the New York Post, about a kid, a seven-year-old kid, who was arrested by police. Uh, he was accused of stealing $5 in a playground, and they came, I guess, to the school playground. Normally, you know, in the past, this would have been handled by a principal or whatever. They arrested him. In this picture, you can't really see it. He's actually handcuffed, handcuffed. in handcuffed. the police station. He got taken from the school, brought to the police station, was there for several hours. They his did. mom took this picture. She's completely freaked out. She, of course, now is suing the city for like $250 million. I uh, hope she time. gets every last cent. This is an absolute outrage. And, you know, I don't know if this would happen to another kid who might be more privileged. The idea they take a seven-year-old boy and put him in handcuffs mm -hmm. is going to traumatize him for the rest of his life. I hope he gets the ultimate college fund, $250 million. Wow. <laughs> $250 million seems like a lot. I think it's... Uh, they and, should and, pay And by the way, taxpayers will be paying that because of, the, of this mistake. Well, by... you know what? What about all the crimes that police didn't investigate while they were interrogating well, the seven-year-old yeah, no, boy listen, I agree. for 10 I, hours? Yeah, I mean, it, I don't understand why you need... I mean, why for $5 they would... I mean, why wasn't this handled by the principal or just dealt with by the school? Mm -hmm. And, and, and he was innocent. He, he didn't take the money. Yeah. Apparently, there were, uh, I don't know, it was a misunderstanding. So, I don't know. It go seems... get him, kid. That's what <laughs> go, I go, say. Go get him, kid. <laughs> All right, we got to take a, uh, a quick break. We're going to uh, have more of the first 15 when we come back. We'll see one family, how they gave their grandfather a very special goodbye. <laughs> Mitchell is my, uh, my co-host for the day. There's uh, another item making news today that apparently uh, doctors in Chile have come up with a new vaccine that they're going to test for alcoholism. And the idea is that they could give this to people um, who, are, uh, who are struggling with alcohol abuse. And it will, I guess it will last for like 6 to 12 months. And it will actually make you, if you, have, if you drink any alcohol after you've had this vaccine, it will make you nauseous and feel terrible, which will stop you from drinking. Well, where's the fun in that? But, <laughs> no, you know, I was thinking about it. They said they're going to start testing it on mice. I think skip the mice, go right to Lindsay Lohan and uh, Randy Travis. Come on, let's test it on the people wow. who need it. Wow. <laughs> Do you, uh, but, but, I mean, I mean it's, uh, there, there's already a pill for that. Ant abuse, yeah. Ant abuse. Yeah. And, you know, the pill wears off. The idea is that they, um, can't wear it off. Once you take it, it lasts for six months. But as a recovering alcoholic myself, 
Uh, that's not the answer. Mm. It's a spiritual problem with a spiritual solution. And you will find your alcohol or your drugs if you're hell bent on doing it. A, mm. a, a shot isn't going to do it. Really? You, you, people would drink even, you think, even if they had the shot? Well, when the shot wears off, they would drink, they will catch up. Right. In, in other words, your, your disease is always doing push ups the whole time you're not drinking. And the second you start mm. drinking, it goes right back to that point where you would be if you had been drinking the whole time. So it's really not the ultimate solution. So is that something you feel like you constantly have to work, work, work on it? Yeah, you have to work on it or that disease is sitting right there on my shoulder telling me, it's okay, you're normal, you can have a drink. Uh, and so what I have to do is constantly exercise the other part of my nature that tells me that that is not what I need to do to solve my problems and, and deal with my internal problems, uh, find out why I'm sad, why I want to escape, why I want to stuff my feelings. How long have you been sober? I'll be 18 years sober in April. Wow, that's great. Yeah. That's really cool. That's, uh, that's really amazing. Thank you. There's another, there's a story in, uh, a story in Chicago that um, a lot of parents are very upset about. A Chicago school in, in, the, uh, in the northwestern suburbs of uh, Cary Grove is planning on having what they call a code red drill to, to kind of teach kids and teachers what would happen in the event of a school shooting. But as part of this, they are actually going to fire off guns in the hallway of the school. They're going to fire off a couple of shots to get kids used to what a gun sounds like being fired in a school, which seems really ridiculous to me. It's insane. I mean, why, I mean you can have a drill. You don't need to shoot off a gun to get kids used to the sound of gunfire in schools. Well, first of all, we're telling kids don't go to see violent movies where you can hear gunfire. No, we'll bring it to your school and we'll set off the guns in your school. It's complete insanity. I mean, does everybody here feel that's crazy? Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. There's another, there's kind of a funny story. It's sort of sweet, I guess, a little sad. There, there was a man, uh, David S. Keim, Jr., who passed away. He was 88 years old, and he was a World War II veteran. He'd won a Purple Heart. He was a father, grandfather, husband, and he loved Burger King, apparently. Yeah. And he loved it so much that his family decided during the funeral procession, they would go through the Burger King drive through <laughs> to honor him. <laughs> And they got like 40 Whoppers. This is here's here they are getting their Whoppers. Wow. And one of their daughter his daughters actually placed his Whopper on his casket. Uh, and I don't know if he was buried with the Whopper because that, uh, that Whopper will probably last forever in eternity. Uh, yeah. This is a whopper of a story. Is this, uh, is this for real, though? I, I, that, they say it's for real. Yeah, this I mean, actually happened. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm personally more of a McDonald's person, so <laughs> I don't quite get the whopper. You know um, what? This you don't is, eat it. You is, don't do any of this. Do I, you? This is why I'm a vegan. Yeah. Because I want to live. I don't want to go to my own funeral. I, see, I like the idea of being a vegan. I just don't know that I could. I mean, it just seems exhausting. Stick with me. You'll you'll be fine. How do you find food to eat? Oh, every? Listen, do you have to forage I, I every find, day? Yeah, I forage. I was foraging backstage you before we came on the show. You have to go to Central Park and forage. <laughs> and, I mean, how do you find things? We have a good time. We go to, uh, there, we have an app, Happy Cow. We, we play the app, and then it tells us where to go to get food. Really? Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Happy Cow. Join us. You know what it is? It's hunting for health. That's what I call it. That's what you call it? Yeah, hunting for health. I don't know. I, I think I, receipts <laughs> just require an awful lot of work. No, it's fun. It's an adventure. You know, because no matter what stupid thing I do uh, on this show or my other show, at night when I put my head in my pillow, I say, nobody got hurt today. You had, that no animals got hurt. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. But what do you eat? So, well, like, what do you, what, what do you? Well, you're thinner than I am. I mean, Anderson, I struggle with my weight. God only knows what I would weigh if I wasn't a vegan. But I have uh, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and grains. I have brown rice and kale and collard greens and Brussels sprouts and all sorts of beautiful um, uh, fruit, fruit platters that I make up. And um, I put a little uh, stevia powder on it. And it's so much fun. And look at the energy I have. Look at the energy I've got. <laughs> Everything you've said depresses me. I'm having Everything. fun. Kale. 
Like we should try yeah, it. Yeah, go try vegan, vegan for a week. week. Go vegan. Yeah, oh, yeah, you'll have fun. I don't think so. <laughs> Seriously. Fun? I don't think I'll have fun. No, yeah, no. You know what it is? It's like food sobriety. You don't think you can have fun unless you're drunk? Well, you can have fun being vegan, too. It's really? a whole new adventure. You've done the same old thing year after year, day after day. Try something it's new. It's just like a cult. You're like, you're like, you're like pushing this <laughs> like a cult or something, I feel. Um, the, uh, so, have you ever worked as a waiter? Uh, yes, I was fired because I refused to serve hamburgers. Is that true, really? Yes, I worked as a waitress in high school on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. It was a hamburger joint, and I tried to convince people not to eat hamburgers, and they, they basically kicked me out. <laughs> as well you should have been. <laughs> I was a waiter, too. I, I, waiting is, is an incredibly tough job. Yeah. I was a terrible waiter because I had no system. You know, you need a system yeah. as a waiter. And I have great respect for waiters because uh, it's a really hard job. Anyway, I saw this story. A guy who claims to be a pastor... Um, on his check, I guess, objected to, there was a, a mandatory 18% tip mm -hmm. that they automatically put on the bill. And this guy wrote, this, uh, someone took a picture of the bill. He wrote, I give God 10%, why do you get 18%? And he crossed off the 18% and gave no tip at all. Oh. And he says pa that he's a pastor, and that would explain why he gave no tip. Yeah. That doesn't seem right. That's ridiculous. What would Jesus do if he was in a coffee shop? He'd be a good <laughs> tipper. You know that. <laughs> Jesus would be a good tipper? Definitely. I believe that's in Corinthians 23. <laughs> um, yes, that Jesus was a good tipper. Yes, if, I, if my memory serves. It might be Luke chapter 4, but anyway. Um, yeah. So I think, I don't know, it just seems completely unfair. Not good. You work hard for it. And 18%, I mean, you know, anyway. Well, I think we I should feel, get I'm, him on tape doing his sermon this Sunday and or, then just, just make it go this, viral or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Coming up, a woman speaks out for the first time since surviving a really horrific acid attack. Gave her third-degree burns, plus her powerful warning chest for everyone at home. We'll be right back.